three tips for taking uh, sunset photos. What's up guys, so today we're gonna try and shoot the sunset in uh, long exposure. So for daytime photography, when you wanna do long exposure in daytime, and especially if you wanna shoot the sunset, but you still want to get the water in front, and I don't know if you've seen, like the, the water is like super smooth in some photos, that's how you do it with the long exposure. I don't know where the light is, okay. Yep, it's the mirror. Sorry guys, I can't do anything with that. I bought the ND filters. So, what uh, ND filter does is that it darkens some parts of the image and then the other part is brighter. So I don't know if you guys can see. And it fades away at some point on the glass. So you get this mount that you mount to your camera and then and I'm also shooting on the kit lens, the 18 to 55 from Canon. So you want to put the darker side on on your camera the way where it, when it, when you're facing the sun, uh, the darker side covers uh, cover where the sun is, so you can get <clears throat> the correct lighting. So you basically just slide it, oops, slide it in there. And this is how it's gonna look like. And the other thing that you need uh, is a tripod. And let's go and see if we can talk about a few tips and tricks on how to do this. I'll see you guys soon. Why did I say that? I'm not. I'm not ending the video. This is, no. Stay. Wait. Oh, the tripod. You need. You definitely need a tripod. So it turns out this is not the correct glass to use right now because the sun is much stronger and the light is super bright. So you want to get a darker glass. So what they what they come with is a bag with many different shades. So he's going to choose a darker one. And the weird thing is it doesn't say the, yeah, it doesn't say anywhere what what shade it is. I use that one. This one's clean. No, it's very light, light, light. Okay, so these two are the darkest ones I can get, and I think we're just gonna try with like the super dark one. Now, I would suggest being careful not to put your. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Fuck! I was just gonna say, don't put your finger on the glass, but then it got stuck with the turn. All right, go. I'm gonna, I'm relaxed. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. So you just slide it right in there. Creep and do the creep. See, sometimes I just say things that I probably don't mean. Aperture, best, best, best aperture would be probably between. There is no specific aperture that you can set your camera at. The best aperture would be between 11 to all the way up to 22. But we're gonna just try a variation. Okay, so I decided to change the aperture. So we're doing a ISO 100. And then we're gonna change the aperture to 22. And so this way we can probably get the uh, smooth water. So let's go and try that. Okay, so that was a fail because 
They said that I can't shoot here. I don't know, this is some dumb shit because it's like private property, whatever. So I'm just gonna go to another place that I know. So I'm gonna just see you guys there. Okay, so this is our setting. So you gotta go on manual and then we're shooting with we're shooting raw. Two seconds with 22 of stop, ISO 100. And I'm gonna show you all the photos that I take. Uh, you, get, you get like that little bit of the blur in the water. So let's just do four seconds. Let's try one with this camera. See how this looks. Okay, it's not half bad. All right, so that was the ND filter that we were using. So I hope you guys can see. Already to right, and we're shooting at four seconds f22. So let's just play with this setting, see if we can shoot at f8 and let's see if it's blown out or not. Yep, it is blown out. So the aperture is how much light comes into your lens. So we're just going to set it at one third. Okay, so this is our... This is our new setting that we're shooting with. So let's see how this looks. So I just moved here just for me to see if I can get the smooth water. Um, it would be better if we do it here because there's like water coming in. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. With this, and then when you do uh, long exposure. Uh, you can uh, also get like the clouds to look smoother like let me just try one here I'm not even gonna leave the car it's way too hot <clears throat> okay now that I got long exposure handheld okay all right here we go guys I have the worst hands, like, you guys have no idea. My hands are like jittery as fuck. Okay, alright, last one. Last one, guys, for real. For real, this is the last one. Alright, so I'm just gonna get rid of the, the glass. I'm also gonna change the lens because I don't tell this to anybody but I just realized that my lens is dirty. Now while I'm doing this stuff just just subscribe. Just hit yeah, just hit the subscribe button. It's right, right. Here or it's here. I think it's here. 
Yeah, it should be here. Right? Yeah, this the right. Just click it's Alright. This is how it looks like basically. This is the mount. So it's a piece of glass that goes inside. You know when you wanna do something with, for the camera and it just doesn't go your way? That's what I'm <clears throat> anyways. Uh you know what? I'm just gonna leave it on there. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it on here because I'm gonna use this again. Just put it like another filter in it. Because, yeah, I just feel like that'll be the best thing, right? Okay. So, I'm gonna put the cap back on again because. We're gonna see if we can do a nice long exposure. But this is how far it's. Okay, I'm just gonna take these off because these are annoying. Okay, so this is the controller basically. I'm gonna turn it on, turn on bulb mode, turn the camera, see our composition. So you see how it's like completely blown out? That's because I haven't put the uh, filter on. So let me just put the filter on real quick. Okay, so because I want to post this on Instagram, we're just gonna put this thing. It's a thing like I'm Drake. But uh, man don't care about all that right now, bro. Cause you know what? Are we there? Awkward. <laughs> Sorry, bed. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, then we're gonna bring it to bulb mode, and then we just push this button, and it's gonna take the photo. So you see, it's, it's counting the seconds. So. This is 25 seconds. This is most likely not gonna work. Yep. This is pretty nice, but it's like a third of a sec. Let's do one second. One second is pretty nice. I like the beam that's coming through the, the clouds. See, I don't know if you guys can see, yeah, uh, you see that? So number one tip is your composition. So composition is really important. You can either really mess up a photo or how I'd like to call it, a total fuck up. Why did I make that face? I don't know. So you want to center the sun in your frame. So you see the sun, how it's centered in this frame. So that's what you're gonna do. And then we're gonna take a photo of one, uh, ISO 100 for one second. And you can also bump it up to two and a half and see how it looks. What's up, man? Alright, this one half, I don't really like it. I want to be, I want it to be more dramatic. And I know I can do it in post, but I don't want to want to do it in the camera. So anything above one second is just too bright for me. So one second is like just right. Uh, we can we can go from there, and we can maybe like even go higher underexposed but for that you don't really this is unnecessary like this whole <clears throat> this whole thing is pretty unnecessary so what you want to do is pretty much uh, you want to leave the ISO as low as possible so on my camera it goes to 100 which is like pretty normal for like normal cameras and um, so we could take a uh, long exposure but too bright it gets too bright I don't like I don't like it when it's too bright all right so sunset photography tips and tricks
there's two tricks or two tips if you will uh, it's composition and f-stop so for f-stop I'm gonna start from the second one and then go to the first one because because I can uh, so f-stop there is no there is no concrete rule for f-stop so it can be it can it might work with any f-stop instant uh, depending on where you are or what you want to shoot but I would suggest uh, between f11 to f22 and the number one rule or tip or trick if you will for and you know when I'm pointing at the camera that it's it means that it's true I'm telling the truth it's composition so you could you have a lot of options you could basically for, in photography you could do whatever you want to do but uh, I would suggest centering the Sun in your frame so you can take the best photo possible and that's it hope you guys enjoy these photos uh, I'm gonna edit them in Lightroom and the photos you've seen are all edited in Lightroom either with my presets or I just started from the beginning usually use a lot of brushes but let me know if in the comments if you want me to actually post a video of how I edited these photos um, that's it for today please like and subscribe I'm not a youtuber I don't know how to do this subscribe Okay, so one more trick uh, or tip, if you will, that I forgot to tell you guys is underexposure is always better than overexposing. If you underexpose, you can get the details back like in post, but if you overexpose, there's no way you can recover the details. To review one time, three tips for taking uh, sunset photos is the composition. Usually try to set, set the sun in the center of your frame. Uh, the second one is the f-stop, so usually between 11 to 22 is my preference, that's, how, that's, that's where I like to shoot. And the third one is, underexposure is always better. Underexposed photos, you can get the details back if you fuck up, which I'm definitely a pro at fucking up, so it's like what I do. Like I get up in the morning and I'm like, yo, let's fuck this up. Literally, that's my motto, every day. Alright, that's it for today guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and I don't know, leave a comment, I don't know man, I'm not a YouTuber, or apparently, I think I am, I don't know, it's just fun, I just like taking photos of shit, anyways, I'll see you guys later. Another extra tip would be to have a little tripod for your phone. Sorry, I just came way too close just to see if it's focused or not. My bad. To have like a little tripod for your phone because it's always good to have a time lapse of the sunset, right? So what you do is you just set it on your car. Uh, just, but make sure, uh, make sure that. Uh, you put your phone on uh, airplane mode so nobody when, when somebody texts you or get, you get a phone call or whatever the phone doesn't shake or it doesn't get disconnected or whatever so airplane mode and then you go to your camera so you just swipe right basically right let me show you guys so you can you can see so that's where the sunset is so that's what we want to get, right? So you click here to get the AEAF, AEAF lock, and then you bring it up just a tiny bit and see how it looks. Maybe it looks better if you bring it down. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna face it a little bit higher and get like the correct horizon. Right, when I set this up, it's story time. Uh, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. A little and so this is the time-lapse option so you have an option here it says time-lapse right 
So you basically go on time lapse and then try to face the phone where you think is the best composition. I like this composition because my camera is there. Oh my god, rude. My camera is there in the frame. You guys see? And you just get the AEAF lock and you hit time lapse. Alright, so story time. So while we're doing this time lapse, I'm probably gonna do it about like 15 minutes or so. Uh, so, um, this is for all the men out there, right? Uh, have you guys seen this movie called uh, Beirut with John Hamm in it? I was raised as an only child to people who basically hated each other just enough to stay together. So I guess you could say I've been mediating since well before I was born. Years before I heard the term mutually assured destruction, I was very familiar with it growing up in that house. Good movie. It's a pretty good movie, right? You know how you go watch a movie with a girl and then she just hits you with she just hits you with stuff that you do not agree with. <laughs> this is probably gonna get me into trouble, but um so you know like I went to watch this movie with uh, this girl, right? And then, so there's a scene in the movie, and if you haven't seen it, it's like a little bit of a, a, a spoiler. So there's a scene in the movie where uh, the terrorists or something attack the, the John Hamm's house in Beirut. And then they uh, hold the wife, his wife hostage. And then John Hamm comes in, and he's like, no, take me, take me, let her go. Until his wife was killed. Damaged goods. And then, as soon as, as soon as the scene ends, the girl looks at me and she goes, she goes, "You never do that." Like, you know, I don't. What do you? I don't know, man. That's like one of the reasons I don't go watch romantic movie with a girl. Cause she'd be like, "You'd never do that," and I'm, I'd rather not reply to that. I'm, I don't wanna. You know what I mean? Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it. I'm not comfortable anymore. This is <laughs> tip number four: is that don't. <clears throat> if if she if she hits you with something like that, just just ignore the question. Just act like you didn't hear it. Cause that's what I did. I just act like I just acted like I didn't hear it, and she didn't know that I knew that she said that. So after this, she's probably gonna know. So. She said she was sweet, ah. We still go a little different around here. We pimping, nigga! And after I post this video, this is not gonna be a good day. Because I know she's probably gonna see it. You know what? I'm not even gonna promote this video. She's probably not gonna see it. So that's fantastic. Yeah, so that's another tip. Just ignore, just act like you didn't hear it. It didn't happen. If it didn't happen, there's no reply for it, right? So it's all good. Back to the time lapse. 